Bonri Tada is a new student studying law in Tokyo. He goes to the famous Tokyo University, but unfortunately he does not know anyone there. Since he arrives late for his entrance ceremony, he has no idea where to go and decides to follow two other students instead. This leads him to meet Mitsuo Yanagisa, who is another first-year student and they quickly become friends. Afterwards, Mitsuo is approached by a pretty girl who gives Mitsuo a bunch of roses, but then unexpectedly hits him before leaving. The girl is Koko Koga, who is actually Mitsuo's childhood friend and his fiancée. But Mitsuo doesn't have feelings for her so he ran away from the engagement. Later, Bonri and Mitsuo find out that Koko is also a student at their university, which shocks Mitsuo. Bonri gets to know Koko in one of their classes, and he begins to have feelings for her. After class, Bonri makes friends with Chinami Oka, another new student, and Linda, who is in the second year and part of a club that studies Japanese festivals. Later on his way home, Bonri runs into Koko again. She borrows his phone to find Mitsuo's location. But when she returns the phone, Bonri sees a hospital's number, and it triggers a memory of a time when he was on a bridge and got hit by a motorcycle. One day Bonri has a strange dream where he's running away from the hospital, but he can't remember much about it when he wakes up. When he gets to the university gate, he meets Koko, who's waiting for Mitsuo. They chat, and Bonri notices that Koko seems really lonely without Mitsuo. Later that night, Bonri tells Mitsuo about Koko, but Mitsuo thinks Koko is just pretending to be lonely to get Bonri to help her find him. To cheer things up, Mitsuo invites Bonri to a party thrown by the film club, which Chinami convinced him to join. But the party gets crashed by the tea club, and they pull Bonri into their party. There, he meets a new friend named Takaya Sato, who is known throughout university by the nickname Nijijin. The next day, Bonri sees that Koko still hasn't made any friends. He encourages her to join a club so she can meet other students. Meanwhile, another student overhears them and invites them to a cafe to learn about her club. They end up talking until it gets dark and she invites them on a club trip to see if they'd like to join. Bonri still wants to help Coco, so he decides to go with her when she agrees to go on the club trip. On the day of the planned club trip, Bonri meets up with Coco and Nijijin, who's also been invited. When the club members come to pick them up, Bonri starts to get suspicious. He notices that they all have the same pendant, and things get even weirder when they take the group to a far-off place. Turns out, the club is actually a cult, and they want Bonri's group to join them. Bonri talks to them and tells them that he had an accident after high school, and he can't remember anything from before college. He thinks they can help him remember. The cult agrees to let the others go, and they leave. Coco decides to stay with Bonri, and they hide in the woods. While hiding, Bonri and Coco open up to each other. Coco admits that she's actually a nice person, and only acts stuck up around Mitsuo because she likes him. She also confesses that she used her friendship with Bonri to get closer to Mitsuo. Bonri, on the other hand, tells Coco that his story about amnesia is true. He feels like his family and friends want his old self to come back and make his current self disappear. He understands their feelings, but he doesn't want to lose who he is now. When they hear the cult members searching for them, Bonri and Coco run deeper into the woods and bump into Linda, a member of the school club that studies Japanese festivals. After Linda finds them, she explains that she was on a retreat with the festival club and takes Bonri and Coco to their campsite. When they return, Nijijin, Mitsuo, and Chinami are relieved to see them safe. Later, Bonri, Mitsuo, and Chinami gather to chat, but Koko interrupts and starts criticizing and belittling Chinami since she notices Chinami and Mitsuo seem close. This upsets Mitsuo, and he leaves with Chinami, leaving Bonri to comfort a regretful Koko. After class, Bonri and Koko run into Linda again, who invites them to join the festival club's dance rehearsals. Bonri decides to join, and Koko thinks about it. Later that night, Mitsuo tells Bonri that he's going to talk things out with Koko because he wants to be with Chinami. The next day, Mitsuo rejects Koko's affection in front of Bonri, saying that he only sees her as a childhood friend, even though he treasures their past. Koko gets really upset and tells him to forget their history, which drives Mitsuo away. She then says hurtful things to Bonri, but quickly realizes she's hurting him and keeps apologizing. A few hours later, a girl named Nana invites Koko, and Bonri to a concert. Coco goes to let off steam but gets kicked out after going on stage. She spends the night at Bonri's place. Coco admits she needs him, and Bonri confesses his love for her. After she leaves, she texts Bonri, encouraging him to remember his lost memories. This motivates him to go back to his home in Shizuoka, where he finds a scrapbook with pictures of himself and Linda from high school. After finding the photo of him and Linda, Bonri rushes to the bridge where the accident happened but he can't remember anything more. The spirit of his 18-year-old self, Bonri Tata, watches him. This spirit explains that the fall made his 18-year-old spirit, along with all his memories, leave his body, but the current Bonri can't see or hear him. When Bonri gets back to school, he meets Coco. She gives him a mirror that matches hers to celebrate their friendship. 
The next day, Bonri and Mitsuo bump into Koko, who acts really cheerful and dramatic about her friendship with Bonri. Linda, who's helping Koko with class registration, joins them and meets Mitsuo, but she doesn't mention knowing Bonri from before. At their first dance rehearsal, Koko shows she can't dance, and it makes her sad. She cries, and after calming down, she apologizes to Bonri for her behavior. She confesses that she's still hurting from being dumped by Mitsuo. Bonri reassures her and reminds her of their friendship by using the mirror she gave him. That night, Bonri remembers something from when he escaped the hospital. He saw a flashing light from his window, and when he went to check, he found Linda. They talked, and she's the one who inspired him to come to Tokyo. Bonri wonders why Linda never mentioned any of this to him, and the spirit of his younger self wishes he could tell the current Bonri how important Linda was to him. In a flashback, Bonri tells Linda that he loves her, and she agrees to give him her answer the next night on the bridge where Bonri had his accident. Coco notices that Bonri acts strangely around Linda, but when she asks him about it, he says everything's fine. Chinami finds Bonri and invites him and Coco to a party, but Coco doesn't want to go because she doesn't like Chinami. However, Chinami likes Coco and explains this to Bonri. Bonri talks Coco into going to the party with him, Mitsuo, and Nijijin. At the party, Koko and Mitsuo argue about Chinami. Mitsuo ends up confessing to Chinami, but she turns him down. On their way home, Bonri decides to end his friendship with Koko because he can't handle her ongoing crush on Mitsuo. Despite Koko's objections, he leaves her. The next day, Linda notices the tension between Bonri and Koko. When she asks about it, Bonri confronts Linda about not telling him that they knew each other before. Linda explains that she didn't want to confuse him or push him away. She also feels guilty for not getting to the bridge in time to prevent Bonri's accident. Later, Coco meets up with Bonri to find out what happened. He starts running away because he realizes that Linda might have liked him back in the day, and how that could have changed things. Before he can wonder if having the same accident would let him redo things, Coco catches up to him and tells him not to leave her. She confesses that she loves him. Coco confesses her love to Bonri, but before he can respond, Coco gets arrested for stealing the bike she used to catch up to him. At the police station, they clear Coco of the charges. She explains why she confessed suddenly, and Bonri tells her he loves her too, and they become an official couple. The next day, Coco openly shows her love for Bonri as they walk to school. Nijijin can't believe it, and Mitsuo, who dyed his hair blonde because he's sad about getting rejected, is mildly surprised. When Chinami comes to greet them, Mitsuo runs away. Chinami says he's been avoiding her, and that she turned him down because he confessed at a party. Linda shows up, and Bonri runs off, admitting he's been avoiding her since their last talk, even though she keeps trying to talk to him. As time goes by, Bonri and Coco enjoy being a couple, but Bonri keeps ignoring Linda, which makes her sad and catches Nana's attention. One day, Bonri has to go back to his apartment because of a plumbing issue. When he gets there, he meets Nana again, who reveals she's his neighbor and faked the plumbing issue to get him to talk to Linda. In Bonri's apartment, he apologizes for his behavior and they rekindle their friendship. Just then, Bonri gets a call from Coco, who's worried about Mitsuo and thinks he might be in trouble. In a flashback, Bonri overhears Linda saying she doesn't like him, so he ignores her for a few days. Then she apologizes, saying she didn't mean what she said. Bonri forgives her, and the spirit of Bonri remembers that this was when things changed between them. He started wondering if Linda did like him. Meanwhile in the present day, Bonri gets a call from Coco and goes to check on Mitsuo was feeling down because he told Chinami to stay away from him due to rumors that she rejected him. To cheer Mitsuo up, Bonri, Nijijin, and Koko take him to an amusement park. The when Chinami calls, Koko invites her to to help mend things between her and Mitsuo. Koko and Bonri meet Chinami at the station. After some teasing between Koko and Chinami, they get along, and the group spends the whole day at the park. Mitsuo and Chinami make up. Later, they all spend the night at Bonri's apartment. While everyone's asleep, Bonri texts Linda who's next door. They meet on the balcony and talk about their past relationship. Bonri asks Linda about her feelings for him back then, and she says she only saw him as a friend. Bonri seems to accept it, but then he suddenly shouts that he wants to go back to that time, surprising both of them. Linda brushes it off and goes back inside. But the spirit of Bonri still loves Linda and wants to be with her, even though he knows he can't leave the current Bonri without disappearing. Meanwhile, Coco gets sick and misses several days of school. When she finally comes back, Bonri notices she's sad, but she denies it. Eventually, she breaks down in tears and tells Bonri she's afraid he might leave her someday. Bonri comforts her, promising he won't leave, and they share their first kiss. The spirit of Bonri, who is watching, thinks about a similar situation he had with Linda. In a flashback to their third year in high school, Linda tells Bonri that she found out her brother's fiancé was having an affair. She asks Bonri for help in exposing it. They take photos of the affair, but Linda changes her mind and deletes the pictures. Instead, she talks to her brother's fiancé, and decides to keep the secret but warns her not to do it again. Bonri is really upset about Linda's decision, but apologizes when he sees how troubled she is by her own deceit. 
Bonri comforts her, saying she's not alone and he'll share the burden of her secret. But he can't reassure her when she asks him to. In the present, Bonri and Linda meet and talk. Bonri mentions that Coco is sick again and Linda talks about her family and brother. When Bonri shows he doesn't remember her having a brother, Linda gets sad and leaves. But before she goes, she uses the words Bonri used to comfort her in the past to encourage him to be there for Coco. The spirit of Bonri, who saw all of this, regrets not confessing his true feelings to Linda when she sought reassurance from him. He thinks it's too late for them. However, the next morning, the spirit of Bonri wakes up inside his physical body. Ghost Bonri wakes up in his body and feels the need to see Linda. He slips and falls, hitting his chin on the floor, and he turns back into new Bonri. He sees in the mirror that Coco gave him that he's cut his chin. Even though it's not a serious injury, Bonri feels sick. He also notices that the hidden picture of Linda and himself is gone. Bonri tries to go to the hospital by himself, but Nana finds him and takes him there. On their way home, Bonri tells Nana that he had the wrong idea about her, and that she's actually really nice. Back home, Nana hands him over to Linda, who accuses her of hurting Bonri. Nana explains she only helped him and leaves them alone. Linda takes care of Bonri for a while, giving him water and medicine, and Bonri thinks about his mixed feelings for Linda and Coco. Later, Coco shows up with a bunch of roses and pretends to accuse Bonri of cheating because he's alone with Linda. Bonri and Linda are surprised until Coco reveals she's joking and throws the roses aside. Mitsu arrives and playfully argues over who caught the bouquet and will get married first. Coco assures everyone that she was just kidding and knows Bonri would never cheat on her. She goes a bit overboard on the subject and gets scolded by Linda. Coco scolds Bonri for not telling her that Nana lives next door but forgives him anyway. She thanks Linda for taking care of Bonri, but Mitsuo thinks she's not being honest about her true feelings. They start to argue, but Linda stops them for Bonri's sake. Coco admits that she got a little jealous when she heard another woman took care of him before she could. But Linda admits that Nana looked after him first. Later, everyone talks about their plans for summer vacation and they decide to go to the beach together. And later that night, Bonri wakes up and finds Coco still there watching over him. Coco apologizes for not taking good care of him and for making a fuss when he wasn't feeling well. She feels down and says she could never be a good girlfriend. Bonri hugs her and asks if she's completely over her cold. She assures him that she couldn't have come to see him if she weren't better. She admits that she wanted to go to the beach only with him and asks if he'll take her when he's better. She says it doesn't have to be Paris, referring to her ideal first time location. Bonri promises to take her when summer vacation comes. Bonri and Coco are on the train, chatting about Coco's new festival club nickname, Robo Girl, because of her robot-like dancing. They're excited about the Awa Dance Festival and their upcoming beach trip. Bonri worries that Coco might be the one who took the photo of him and Linda from his apartment. They meet up with the other festival club members and discuss the festival preparations. Later, Bonri talks to some upperclassmen and asks for advice about his beach trip with Coco. They suggest that a simple day trip by train might not be enough for a classy girl like Coco, and advise him to get a job to make some money. Coco tells Bonri she doesn't want him to get a job because it would mean they won't see each other as much. She offers to pay for both of them on their trip, saying she wants to spend as much time with him as possible. She admits she worries about what he's doing when they're apart and acknowledges her own quirks. Coco wishes she could shrink him down and carry him in her bag for safety. Meanwhile, Chinami arrives and says hello, mentioning that she's on her way to her part-time job. She tells Bonri that her employer is hiring more people, so they go with her to the upscale cafe where she works. But Coco insists Bonri shouldn't work there. Later, Bonri visits Nana to repay her for cab fare and brings her cookies. Nana offers him a job as a waiter at a weekend party and insists he brings Mitsuo along. Mitsuo is reluctant until they're approached by the tea club with a dubious job offer. On the night of the party, Bonri tells Mitsuo he can't hang out with Coco because he needs to work on a report. At the party, Bonri ends up dressed as a maid, and Mitsuo agrees to wear just a flesh-colored speedo for extra money. Bonri also sees Linda working as a devil girl at the party. Coco gets worried and tries to contact Bonri, but he doesn't have his phone at the party. Meanwhile, it was secretly her that had the photo of Bonri, and Linda. While Bonri is working as a waiter at the party, along with Nana, Mitsuo, and Linda, Coco sends more texts to him but gets worried when he doesn't reply. Some guests spot Bonri and Linda together and want to take their picture. They get carried away and pose in a flirty way just as Coco arrives. She's furious and throws a drink in Bonri's face and slaps him. Linda tries to apologize, but Nana stops her, and Bonri takes Coco to a fitting room. He can't talk much because he's still working, so he gives Coco the key to his place and tells her to wait for him there. Coco leaves, and Bonri goes back to work but is worried about their relationship. After the party, they get paid, and Bonri tells Mitsuo that his salary might not be very useful. On his way home, Bonri checks his phone and realizes that Coco has been texting him all day. He rushes home to find Coco waiting in the dark apartment. They apologize to each other, and Coco returns the photo of Bonri and Linda, which surprises him. 
Bonnery admits that he used to be in love with Linda, and that sometimes he still feels his old feelings for her. Foco hugs him and says all she wants is for Bonnery not to remember the past. They understand each other, and the couple reconciles. The next morning, Bonnery tells Linda that he wants to talk to her. By the river, he asks if she loved the old Bonnery, and she says she only saw him as a friend. Bonnery tries to tear the picture of them together, with the ghost of the old Bonnery disagreeing. He drops the picture, and Linda picks it up. Bonnery stands up and tells her they should pretend to be strangers because he wants to break ties with the past. Linda understands that Coco is bothered by her being part of Bonnery's past life, and says they're doing the right thing. She then tears the picture into pieces, surprising Bonnery. The next morning, Coco and Bonnery take a picture together, creating new memories just for the two of them. Law student Bonnery Tata dreams about when he was in the hospital. Meanwhile, the ghost of his past watches him. In the dream, Bonnery had met with Linda, another law student, and was supposed to pass along a special message for her. But since Bonnery's memory is fragmented, he doesn't quite remember all the details. Later, the festival club at their university needs to perform at the Awa Dance Festival. Everyone has a good time at the festival, but Coco becomes anxious and she tries to run, but is prevented by Linda. As the dance starts, the other club members leave Coco alone until Linda suggests that the club conducts a special dance for the first years. Suddenly, the group dances in a circle around Bonnery and Coco, and feeling pressured, they join in the dance too. Afterward, Coco and Bonnery enjoy the festival, and prepare to watch the fireworks. Nearby, Ghost Bonnery is saddened because he still loves Linda, and Bonnery has rejected the feelings he left behind due to his memory loss. Ghost Bonnery vows to become an evil spirit, and curse Bonnery with unhappiness. Suddenly, it starts raining, forcing Coco and Bonnery to seek shelter. Later, Bonnery learns that the festival club's camp has been cancelled, reflecting on how his summer plans have been disrupted. He waits by the elevator to surprise Coco, but when the doors open, it's Nana instead, who punches him and leaves. Coco arrives and pretends to cook yakisoba for him, but it turns out she brought pre-prepared food. Bonnery catches on, and Coco admits it was a joke. During an evening walk, Coco confesses that her family's maid actually prepared the yakisoba. They sit in a park, discussing Coco's possible enrollment in culinary school, and her family's upcoming trip to Barcelona. Coco tries to kiss Bonnery, but he pulls away and walks off. Later, he wishes he could ask Coco not to go to Barcelona, and stay with him, fearing she might leave him someday. Thereby, Ghost Bonnery vows to make Bonnery even unhappier. Later, Bonnery's friend Nijijin calls him because he heard that Bonnery has been feeling lonely. He suggests hanging out, but Bonnery already has plans with Coco. They talk about wanting to spend time with their friend Mitsuo, who has been busy lately. Coco arrives and overhears their conversation. She's suspicious until Bonnery hands her the phone, and she realizes it's Nijijin on the line. Coco becomes curious about Mitsuo possibly having a girlfriend, and devises a plan to find out who she is. She enlists Bonri and Nijijin to help. Their plan starts with watching Chinami's house, thinking she might be the girlfriend. Chinami catches them, and Bonri quickly explains they were just visiting. Surprisingly, Chinami invites them inside, revealing she's not in a relationship and hasn't seen Mitsuo since summer vacation began. She's living alone while finishing college, and Koko admits to feeling jealous of her independence. Chinami expresses her worries about living alone for the first time. They reaffirm their decision to go to the beach together. They head to the film club's hangout spot but notice Mitsuo and Linda walking in together, seemingly on a date. To give them privacy, they decide to go somewhere else. Later, Coco arrives at Chinami's house with swimsuits, and they try them on while discussing Coco's relationship with Bonri. Coco shares her concern about Bonri's resistance to physical intimacy, and her fear that he might leave her someday while searching for himself. Coco wishes they could spend more time together at Bonri's apartment. She questions whether Bonri truly loves her and worries about him disappearing. Coco then suggests that they wear school swimsuits to the beach and films themselves in those swimsuits. Later in Bonri's apartment, Mitsuo and Bonri discuss their swimwear choices, and Mitsuo wishes he could invite Linda. He wonders where her hometown is, and Bonri lies, claiming not to know. On the day of the beach trip, the group faces various problems during their journey. It all begins with Coco and Bonri meeting Nijijin at the wrong spot, causing some delays. They also experience delays when picking up Chinami and Mitsuo. Heavy traffic further slows down their exit from the city. Despite the weather forecast suggesting otherwise, it starts to rain when they arrive at the beach. Coco needs to use the restroom, so she gets out of the car in her swimsuit, and the others follow suit. Thankfully, the rain eventually stops, and they can enjoy their beach day. Nijijin feels really tired, so Coco takes the wheel for the ride back home. As they're driving, Bonri tries hard to stay awake, but ends up falling asleep. Not long after, Coco also gets tired and dozes off while driving. Just before the car starts veering out of control, Bonri wakes up and hits the brakes, bringing the car to a stop after it collides with the guardrail. The accident causes Chinami to get a bloody lip, damages the car's bumper, and messes up the guardrail. The police help them get back to the city. When they arrive, Coco's dad is really angry, 
and slaps her. Unfortunately, their plan to go to Barcelona gets cancelled. The next day, Bonri, Mitsuo, Chinami, and Nijijin meet up to take responsibility for what happened. Bonri feels the most guilty because he couldn't keep Coco awake. He goes to Coco's house to talk to her, but she's still in bed and doesn't want to get up. The accident makes Coco realize she's been acting immature even though she's an adult. Bonri tells her that she needs to grow up but also stay true to herself. Coco shares a dream she had with Bonri, where they were in a car, and when they were told to stop, she got out, and the car drove away. This makes her worry that if Bonri ever remembers his past, he'll fall in love with Linda again instead of her. Coco's dad comes into her room and tells Bonri to make some ramen while Coco goes back to bed. Bonri heads over to the Golden Time restaurant where the festival club is getting ready for a gathering during the fireworks extravaganza. The club members act strangely nice and welcoming, making Bonri feel uneasy. He realizes they are trying to comfort him after what they think is his breakup with Coco. However, when Coco arrives, they clear up the confusion but create a new misunderstanding with some former fourth year members. Linda shows up late, and they discuss the accident. Bonri asks how she knew about it since she was out of town, but Linda gives a vague answer. Linda also mentions a class reunion, and Coco decides for Bonri that he'll attend. Coco and Bonri talk about how he's ready to confront his past, especially after their honest argument. Coco admits her love for Bonri has grown even more after their fight, and encourages him to go back home. The next day, Bonri is on a train heading home. Meanwhile, Chinami invited Coco to help her unpack and reluctantly stays overnight. They talk about Coco's strong love for Bonri. In another place, at the club where Linda works, Mitsuo and Linda chat while she cleans. Mitsuo wonders if telling her about the accident was a mistake. He discovers that Linda will be away like Bonri, and notices her train tickets are for the same destination as Bonri's. When he playfully asks her about it, Linda gets upset and walks away. The following day, Nijijin, Coco, and Mitsuo enjoy a treat at a cafe. Mitsuo and Nijijin discuss their thoughts on Bonri's amnesia situation. Mitsuo tries to ask Coco about it, but she avoids the question and changes the topic, leaving Mitsuo to ponder what he's learned. Coco goes to Bonri's apartment by herself, and checks his mail because she misses him a lot. She throws a tantrum, sniffs Bonri's pillow, and tries to cheer herself up by acting silly. Nana catches her doing this and suggests that Coco could do this act during Nana's show, but Coco declines. Coco then playfully wrestles with Nana, trying to keep her from telling Bonri what she did in his room. Coco agrees to help Nana in another way, and Nana uses her as a test subject for a new idea in her act. Meanwhile, Linda and her brother show up at Bonri's house to go to a class reunion. During the drive, Linda notices that Bonri seems very nervous. At the high school, Bonri becomes so anxious about not having his memories that he freezes and won't move. Linda tricks him into entering the reunion. At the reunion, everyone wears either red or blue shirts with name tags for a dodgeball rematch. Bonri's team had previously beaten Linda's team on a disputed technicality. Linda uses the same technicality to win the game this time. At the party, Bonri's classmates warmly welcome him, despite him not remembering them. They share stories about the old Bonri, which embarrasses him. Their former teacher arrives and adds to the stories, making Bonri feel even more self-conscious. However, taking pictures with his former classmates helps him feel better. Later that night, Linda and Bonri talk on their way home. They discuss how Bonri has finally accepted his situation, despite the past tension between them. Linda has also come to terms with their situation. Bonri then takes a picture of the bridge where his accident happened, and has a vision of the accident. He tries to save the ghost Bonri, but fails, dropping and breaking his mirror. He wonders if his memories are starting to return. Bonri talks to a doctor about the incident with Ghost Bonri falling from the bridge. The doctor gives him a sedative, but there's not much else they can do. On the train ride back to Tokyo, Bonri thinks about why Ghost Bonri seems to have given up trying to take over his body. When Bonri returns to Tokyo, he remembers that his mother gave him her ring to give to his girlfriend. However, he gets distracted when Coco and the others meet him. That night, they have a welcome home dinner for Bonri, and he notices that Chinami has cut her hair. Mitsuo then asks a favor from Coco and Bonri to film the festival club as a way to get closer to Linda. Later, Bonri and Mitsuo discuss their knowledge of Mitsuo and Linda's situation. But when Mitsuo confronts Bonri about his past with Linda, Bonri considers being honest but decides not to. Back at Bonri's apartment with just Bonri and Coco, Bonri apologizes to Coco for breaking their friendship mirror. He thinks about giving her his mother's ring but doesn't get a chance. Coco gives him a piece of art she made and expresses her feelings. Although their plans for a romantic night don't go as expected, Coco realizes that Bonri truly loves her. Much later, Mitsuo gets permission to film the festival club, but Linda is unhappy about it. Mitsuo never gets a chance to talk to Linda as she avoids him. Linda indicates she wants to talk to Bonri, and Coco distracts Mitsuo. Linda and Bonri discuss Mitsuo coming to the club, and they eventually talk calmly. Linda reveals their dinners together, 
but also expresses her difficulty in accepting Mitsuo's interest in her, which led to their argument. After their conversation, Chinami arrives and confronts Bonri about his closeness with Linda, believing it's inappropriate because Mitsuo likes Linda. When Bonri tries to explain, she becomes angry and walks away, leaving Bonri feeling dejected. Bonri catches up with Coco to talk about recent events. They discuss Chinami and realize they're okay with their former crushes liking others. Bonri thinks about giving Coco his mother's ring, but realizes he forgot it. Back at his apartment, Bonri contemplates when and how to give the ring to Coco, and wonders who he can talk to about it. The next morning on the way to school, Bonri encounters Nana on the train. He tries to start a conversation but realizes she's not in the mood. She falls asleep on him. At school, Bonri, Coco, and Nijijin discuss Mitsuo's strategy for filming the festival club. Mitsuo and Chinami arrive, and Chinami convinces Coco to join her in getting Belgian chocolate. Bonri notices that Chinami has been ignoring him since the previous night. Mitsuo, Nijijin, and Bonri discuss Mitsuo's lack of progress with Linda. They notice class is about to start and hurry away. After class, Bonri meets Coco, and they go to the Woodstock Cafe to discuss their future. They both appreciate the pleasant days they've been having lately. The next day at school, Bonri contemplates how to give Coco his mother's ring. The tea club girls discover his plan and make him nervous before trying to recruit him. Coco arrives, and they head to festival club practice. Bonri and Coco notice that fourth year Kashino seems to be protecting Linda from Mitsuo. Later, at the train station, Bonri and Coco have a conversation. During the performance, Mitsuo focuses on filming the festival club, and Linda notices that Coco isn't nervous as she helps the fourth years. Bonri has a mental breakdown during the performance, and his past self resurfaces. He runs away, and Linda and Coco go after him. Linda finds him later, and they discuss what's happening to him. When Linda mentions Coco, his new self returns. But now Bonri fears that his old self might take over again. After the away dance festival incident, Bonri worries about losing himself as his old memories start coming back. To comfort him, Coco arranges a dinner with their friends at his place, where he plans to share his background and recent troubles. However, things take a turn when Bonri tries to invite Chinami, who is still upset with him but agrees to come anyway. Chinami arrives early to have a serious conversation with Bonri before the others show up. She explains that she confronted Linda and demanded to know her relationship with Bonri. Nana interrupts her, and at first, Chinami is frightened. But Linda diffuses the situation, surprising Chinami by offering to listen to her problems. Chinami confesses that she loves Mitsuo, and regrets rejecting him and changing her appearance by cutting her hair. She had hoped Mitsuo would notice her, and seeing Bonri being friendly with Linda made her feel relieved. She apologizes tearfully to Bonri for her earlier rudeness. After her emotional outburst, Chinami asks Bonri to film her in her dejected state. Just as Bonri intends to share his past with Linda, his former self takes over, and he starts calling out for Linda. He abruptly leaves his apartment, telling Linda and the others not to inform Coco that his memories are returning, unaware that Chinami's camera is still recording. The following morning, Coco refuses to accept the ring Bonri gave her, and decides to end their relationship. Shocked by Coco's words, Bonri waits for her at the place where she rejected him, hoping she might return. Hours pass, and he ends up meeting Coco's father, who offers him a ride home. During the drive, Coco's father mentions that she's aware of Bonri taking anti-anxiety medication, and had inquired about the reasons behind it. Later, Bonri runs into Nana and shares his recent troubles with her. Encouraged by her words, he plans to have a conversation with Coco the following day. The next day, Bonri meets Coco, who seems cheerful and apologizes for her actions the previous day. However, things take a sudden turn when Coco meets their friends, and casually announces that she and Bonri have broken up. This leaves Bonri and their friends in shock and confusion. When Mitsuo attempts to defend Bonri, Coco shuts him down, lashes out, and abruptly leaves. Chinami informs Bonri that Coco might have seen a clip of his anxiety attack, and Bonri decides to stay optimistic. Later, Bonri shares the news of his breakup with Coco with Linda, and the festival club president. Linda reacts strongly, scolding Bonri for giving up on Coco. Their argument escalates, with Bonri blaming Linda for not meeting him at the bridge before his accident, causing tension between them. Linda reveals her guilt and wishes she could have told him her feelings, leading to a meltdown. Mitsuo arrives and learns about Bonri's past relationship with Linda. He's angry and hurt that Bonri didn't share this information with him, and Linda admits to being involved in keeping it a secret. As Coco appears and hands in her club resignation letter to the president, Bonri tries to intervene, but Mitsuo is left feeling betrayed by Bonri for not being upfront about his past with Linda. Bonri decides to have a talk with Coco. She explains that she wanted to resign from the festival club because Bonri seemed distant from her. Bonri then reveals that his memories from before his accident are coming back, and eventually, he'll lose the memories he's made since the accident. Coco admits she still loves him, 
but broke up because she couldn't bear the thought of him forgetting her. She asks Bonri to promise that if he remembers her, they'll stay together forever. Grateful for their time together, they agree to be friends, and Coco withdraws her club resignation. She makes Bonri promise not to forget her, and he agrees. Bonri attempts to mend his friendship with Mitsuo, who had been distant since learning about Bonri's past with Linda. Meanwhile, as their school festival approaches, Bonri's condition worsens, worrying Coco. Nijijin, feeling left out of their group's dynamics, plans to bring everyone together. While waiting for Coco and Mitsuo on the street, Bonri experiences another memory lapse and doesn't recognize them when they arrive. Panicking, he calls out for Linda. Luckily, Linda appears, and Bonri snaps out of it. Once he regains his composure, Bonri decides to return to his hometown, believing that his memories and former self will fully return. During the school festival, the festival club receives support from the private school committee thanks to Mitsuo. Bonri reconciles with Mitsuo, who tearfully expresses his understanding and support for Bonri's memory loss. During the Awa dance performance, Bonri reflects on how moments and feelings come and go. He acknowledges that he has returned to his former self, losing the memories he made since the accident. Bonri loses his recent memories and decides to go back to his hometown. He looks at the notes he wrote to himself before his old memories returned. While checking his email, he realizes someone has been sending messages to Coco using his name. Bonri and Linda seem to have a good friendship, and Linda spends Christmas with Bonri's family. He thinks about Linda's response to his feelings and all the events that have happened since his accident. Coco comes to visit Bonri at his home. At first, Bonri mistakes her for Chinami. She gives him a DVD and a mirror case, which he believes is hers so he returns it to her. Coco asks for directions to the bridge where Bonri had his accident, and then leaves. Back inside, Bonri discovers Coco's unbroken mirror, realizing it's not his. Suddenly, all his memories of Coco come rushing back. He rushes after her to the bridge, where he meets his former self, who is upset but eventually accepts the situation. The former Bonri makes amends with the current Bonri, gives him a ring, and passes on. Bonri embraces Coco, and they recall their promise to stay together as long as they remember each other. They declare their love and exchange rings. It's revealed that Nijijin had been sending emails to Coco as Bonri to support him. Chinami edited a video Bonri made and asked Coco to give it to him. Bonri watches the video and thanks Coco for being by his side. Bonri returns to Tokyo, attends university with his friends, and maintains his relationship with Coco. Mitsuo and Linda flirt, and Bonri and Coco share a kiss, with Coco wearing the ring Bonri gave her. And this is all for this video, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.